Welcome to video 27 on fun with Arduino. In the previous video we created a servo motor tuning application and while we were using it we found out that there could be two enhancements, namely if we could uh, distinguish between pressing the button long or short I could create an additional function like go to the midpoint. And also if I rotate the encoder, uh, yeah, the increments are one step, so it takes quite a while if I need to change 60 steps. Why not distinguish between rotating slow or fast, and if I rotate fast, then I can have a larger increment, so I'm sooner where I want to be. And for both these functions, uh, yeah, actually all that we need is to do some timing. So we are going to use again the millis function. Let's have a look. I took the code of the previous video, the servo tuning application, and added any, everything that is needed to distinguish between long and short presses. These two defines give me the numbers that I want to use for that. And then also there are two defines for a slow or a fast rotation. How many milliseconds is that? And then of course I have to tell uh, if I want to have a, an increment for a slow rotation. In this case I chose that to be 1. And for a fast rotation I chose it to be 10. Also, the increment now is not just a define. There are two different values, 1 and 10 in this case. So I made a byte for that, that uh, it's now a variable that I can change. What more has changed here with the variables? Well, I now not have only two set points, but I have three. Because with a long press of the button, I want to go to the middle angle. And the middle angle has been defined here as the maximum and minimum defines that we gave at the top divided by 2 of course. And then the set points are that mid angle minus 5, the mid angle plus 5 and the mid angle itself. All right, um, the servo include and the servo definition have not changed at all. Uh, also, the whole setup is still exactly the same as in the previous video. So let's now go to the loop and see what has changed uh, there. The first thing that we do is uh, read the switch and put it in the variable encoder switch. And then we test if it is pressed, if the switch is pressed, the new value is a 0 and the previous value, the old value, is a 1. And at that moment in time, all that we do is we store the current milli clock, millis clock in our new time variable uh, switch pressed time. That's all that we do. And then uh, I keep my finger on the button, but at a certain moment I let go. And that moment, uh, that is of course detected here with this if statement. And now all I need to do is check where the clock is uh, to distinguish if it is a long press. If it is a long press, then I want uh, to go to the mid angle, so I make my set point pointer 2. That was our mid angle. And I do some serial printing to tell uh, the user this has happened. Uh, if it was not a long press, then I do a second test, a second if, uh, to test if it was a short press. Um, and if it was, then I change my uh, set point pointer between 0 and 1, just like we did in the previous video. And I do again some printing. And then also if, if it was not a short press, if the time was even shorter than the short press, then I know it probably was mechanical bouncing of the switch. So I can print that, and, but further I just ignore that. That's uh, what we have done here in the switch. And now something similar happens in the uh, reading of the encoder. We have of course the clock uh, data, that uh, the clock pulse that we read out. 
And if we detect a uh, zero to high transition in that clock, then we do again uh, the test. Uh, we, we check if the current clock minus the last transition time is larger than a slow rotation. If that is so, then I increment uh, with the slow increment defined. Uh, if it was not slow, then, yeah, then I check if it was fast and then I increment uh, with the fast increment. And even if it, that it was faster than that, yeah, then obviously my, uh, the, my encoder has bounced and I print that uh, fact and I put the increment to, to zero to ignore it. And then finally I store the, the, current, uh, trans the current time so that I know that this now was the last time that I detected a rotation. And then, uh, yeah, all that needs to be done is uh, to uh, change uh, the set point. That depends on the data pin at this moment in time. Uh, we have seen in the previous video how we can distinguish between clockwise and counterclockwise rotation. Nothing has changed there. And of course, we start to increment our servo motor and nothing has changed there either. Well, I think it's time to put this to the test. Let me upload this and start a, a video so we can see how it works out. Uh, the upload is almost done. Yes, it is. I open the serial monitor. It goes to the set point 85. Yeah, that was the mid angle minus 5. That was our starting point. Servo is uh, more or less uh, straight, 5 uh, degrees. And I can now rotate my encoder with uh, single steps. And we see that uh, with slow steps, and that, that means single uh, angle increments, single degree increments. But now I do a fast uh, rotation and we see that the server starts to move fast. Well, that is exactly what we wanted. We can also see on the serial interface that uh, it takes 10 degree steps or 1 degree steps and every now and then it tells us that it has bounced. Okay, let's make a nice angle uh, somewhere lower than 85, somewhere over here. And then we go to the other angle, a short press. The serial monitor says I now did a short press. Let's choose another angle, well, a, a fast rotation and a couple of uh, single step rotations. That is my second angle. So I can now switch with a short press between these two set points. I have done my servo tuning. But suppose that you need um, to, uh, to control uh, uh, junctions on your layout and you have uh, 10 servos that you want to put to the midpoint. Yeah, then it is best to do a long press and send it exactly to 90 degrees. So right now the set point is 90 degrees. I can take off this motor from the uh, Arduino, put another motor on and it will immediately again go to 90 degrees so that I can uh, put it mechanically right and then do the tuning. Well, I think it's, uh, it's working uh, quite well. The uh, set points change and I can do fast or slow rotations and the servo follows that exactly. It's time to go on to the next video and I think that uh, our program start to become a little bit longer now. I think it is a good time to have a look at some different options that we have for editors, code editors. This Arduino editor, yeah, it's okay, but it's just okay, not more than that. There are much more versatile editors that have a wealth of additional functions that we can put to our use. See you back there.